Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about five tips for new A1 users. Now, look, you've probably seen, I've got the uh, A1 back there, I'm pretty new to it. So, I wanted to cover a few things that I've learned over the short time that I've had with this printer that will maybe help you out as well. So, let's get into it. Now before we start, it, maybe you've got some tips that you'd like to share with everybody else. So if you've got something that you've learned about the A1, go ahead and uh, drop a comment. Let us know. Are there anything uh, that you've uh, discovered about this printer that might help others? Um, just go ahead and let us know and uh, please share your knowledge with the rest of our uh, channel followers. Okay, tip number one. Now, if you're using bamboo filament, then you don't really have to worry too much about calibration. I won't say that it's necessarily perfect, and I'm far from an expert, but if you're using any kind of you know, off-brand, uncalibrated uh, type of filament, then I'd highly recommend that you run the manual calibration. Now, these printers are pretty good about taking care of a lot of things on their own, but they can always be improved by a little bit of you know, user intervention. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here because it's a pretty long process, or I shouldn't say long, but um, I'm working on a video that will cover the uh, calibration, and that's a, probably another 10 minutes that you probably don't want to sit around for this. But let me just tell you, it will step you through a few things. There's um, flow dynamics, and uh, it'll pro produce either a line or a pattern that um, you can uh, take a look and see how your printer is performing and enter some values that will be stored either on the printer or in your uh, software as a filament profile that will help you out. Um, and so you've got flow dynamics and then you've also got flow rate and it'll print out a series of these little, uh, you know, a grid of these different swatches, if you will, that'll have different surface textures on them and it has to do with uh, the flow rate and you'll be looking for the shiniest value and that will, um, you will go ahead and again put that into the, uh, to the software and it will improve your prints. Now I've done this for a number of different uh, filaments, uh, pretty much everything that I have back there I have calibrated and that's going to improve your print performance. All right, the second tip, this is kind of a cool one, so filament run out or auto refill. So now this really only works if you have the same uh, types of filaments loaded. And again, it doesn't have to be bamboo, but so here I have PETG Basic in black. Um, this is what I use um, to print my production parts. So I print a lot of things like this. Now if I have, um, I could load three spools of this black and then one spool of say white or the, uh, the transparent like I have in this piece. And if I were to run out of the black, since that's what's used mostly, if I have auto refill loaded on, I can tell it and it will fail over. So when this spool runs out, you know, let's say I had this on my AMS and I had this in position number one, and I had also black in two and three, well, if one runs out, then it'll kick over to two, and then two runs out, it would kick over to three. So it's just a great way of being able to um, produce, you know, if you're doing a, a big run or maybe you've got a spool that's almost out of filament, um, you can just load it up and it's going to fail over and you're not going to wake up, hopefully, um, to a, uh, you know, a printer area where it says it ran out of uh, filament and you thought you had started a long job and now it's just been sitting there idle for several hours while it waited for you to change filament. So that's kind of a, a really ha handy feature. So that is uh, auto refill and that's a setting uh, that is based in the software. All right, tip number three. Tip number three is to print a scraper. Wait a minute, didn't we talk about the scraper in the original video? I'm not talking about this one. This one is kind of cool, it's got this metal blade, but like I said before, uh, metal blades and your, uh, your build plates, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of metal blades on um, these plates, especially this one's pretty robust, but if you have something like this where you've got a, a smooth plate, putting a metal uh, scraper on this, you're going to damage it pretty quickly. So when I say print a scraper, I mean print one of these. 
Now I've got all sorts of them. I've printed a bunch of them because I find these things so handy. Initially, I started with one and I said, you know, heck, these take next to no filament whatsoever. I've got some filament laying around that I don't really uh, care too much about. So I'm gonna print one for every printer that I have. So I ended up printing these. Now these were made out of PLA, so they're gonna be softer. And if the bed's, you know, warm, um, they may get uh, a little warped. So I went ahead and printed three more out of PETG. So these are gonna be a little bit uh, easier to use. And the nice thing about them is I am not going to scratch the plate when I'm trying to get something off. I'm not, I'm not going to gouge into there and, and mess up uh, my build plates. So these things are great. I highly recommend that you print uh, some of these. And these are uh, found on, on Maker World. Um, I'll put a link in the description so that you can print your own scrapers. Tip number four. I'm getting better at this. Four. Tip number four is AMS light filament spool adapters. So you may have been wondering what this big green thing was over here. So again, if you're printing with bamboos uh, spools, and we talked about this in the, for, in the review video, you know, these come, they're refillable, they have the little RFID tag, so the AMS light will automatically detect them. Well, if you are using the AMS light, uh, you can see the size of this hole here quite a bit smaller than this one. So what I did is, again, also available in Maker World, you can get these AMS light spool adapters, and this will adapt it so that this will fit right onto the AMS light and hold your spool. Now, this particular design has these kind of tabs that come out the side and they're flared and, and compressible. Um, it was still a little too small for this particular spool. If I would have, I didn't know exactly at the time, I could have increased the size on it and it would have fit in here a little bit snug, but I wasn't gonna reprint this. So I just got some foil tape uh, and threw it on there and this is gonna be more than fine. And when I'm done with this spool, I can take that tape off, take out my spool adapter and use it on the next one. Now, primarily for me, I can tell you that um, uh, Overture, the cardboard spools work great on that. They fit right on. But if you have something that doesn't quite fit, print yourself a spool adapter. That's tip number four. And tip number five, tip number five. This is not sponsored by Dawn Dishwashing Liquid, but uh, it does seem, I always see Dawn. I don't know, uh, you know, everywhere I look, people say, you know, use Dawn dish soap and a uh, sponge or whatever. Um, I don't think there's anything necessarily magical about Dawn, but dish soap and what I have found is a green scrubby like this. This one's a little folded over, but a green scrubby or the backside of one of your sponges, if it has that little green section on it, um, these work wonders. Now, when I was, uh, before I got the bamboo, I was just having a heck of a time with my Prusas. Uh, the build plates, um, nothing against them, they, they're great, but I would find after several uh, could be Usually it seemed to be a, more of a time issue. Obviously, the more I would print, um, it would get to the point where things no longer would stick. And, and bill plates are consumables. They won't last forever. But um, I would, you know, every two or three months I was buying a new bill plate. And I was washing them. I was using the dish soap. I was using a regular yellow sponge. Um, I was also using isopropyl alcohol in between prints, but it would still go down. Um, eventually, I you know, kept reading and reading and somebody said, hey, you know, give it a good scrubbing. Use the green green thing, give it a, a good scrubbing, make sure that uh, you're getting everything off there. And then they said, pay attention to the way that the water drains off of it when you're done. If it's still, um, if it's still just running off like a duck's back, then you probably still have a lot of oil on there. Um, but if you scrub this down really good and it's wet and then that water just kind of slowly, you know, consolidates and slowly runs off, then you've got a good surface on there that's going to uh, take well to the filament. Now, I got my fingers all over these. I'm going to have to scrub these down again. But tip number five is clean your build plate and then make sure you dry it thoroughly. You know, get a lint for lint-free cloth or maybe one of those microfiber cloths, something like that that's not going to leave stuff on there uh, that's going to uh, interfere with your adhesion. So that is tip number five. Hey, what about a bonus? I like to do bonuses. Let's do a little bonus tip. Now, the uh, you'll see, 
I don't know if it's on here, maybe not. I thought it was, but um, the advertised printing size for the A1 is 256 by 256 by 256. Now, there are some areas that you can't print on this plate just because of the way that the printer is designed. It's gotta go over and it's gotta hit uh, the, the filament cutter um, and heights and things like that. So there's some concessions that are made and maybe you can't quite get that full build volume. Well, there are, if we uh, take a look at the Bamboo Wiki, they do have some workarounds for that so you can get almost that um, advertised value. And I'm gonna go ahead, I, it's not something that I've run into, but I see it every once in a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to that as well. So that uh, if you need to print something pretty large, then you can use that full build volume. So that's my bonus tip for you today. All right, I hope you enjoyed those tips um, for new A1 owners, and some of them may be applicable to many different uh, 3D printers. But as always, if you've enjoyed what I'm doing here on the channel, I would appreciate it if you'd go ahead and subscribe. We're uh, well over 700 subscribers now, and I'd like to keep seeing that number grow. If you uh, like the video, go ahead and hit that like button and uh, hit that little bell and you'll know when I, when, uh, I release new content. I'm trying to get better at uh, continuing to release things uh, that are timely and informational. So again, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for learning with me and I hope that we can continue to learn together.